All right, let's call the meeting of the LaPorte County Board of Zoning Appeals for Tuesday, July 16th to order. If, Greg, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? If you'd all stand, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Could I get a roll call, please? Melissa Mullins Mishke? Here. Dwayne Hogan? Here. Greg Zabala? Here. Earl Cunningham? Here. Glenn Minnick? Here. Wonderful, thank you, and I apologize for my absence last month, and thank you guys for taking care of the meeting for me. Um, do I have a motion to approve the meeting minutes for June 18th? Make a motion to approve the meeting minutes as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, minutes approved. So, Let's see if petition number one for a variance of developmental standards for Carol L. Skaggs for construction of a second accessory building, sorry, structure 30 feet by 40 feet on the lots across from the residence for the property located across the street from 7668 East Tula Plain, New Carlisle, Indiana, Hudson Township, zoned R1B. Are you here? Would you like to come forward and present your legal work to our attorney, please? Okay, cool. It'd be cool. You, I, uh, you proof of publication. You, and I need your proof of publication and your mail notices. Certified mail cards, you're supposed to send certified mail to these folks. That's this thing. And this week's the right now. It doesn't say who went to, it's only one of them. This would be the structure here. This is a tunnel. Ganipsko and Tandrick. Oh, well, the truth is, that thing is all kind of crazy up there. Well, there are two different parcel numbers. And you got the fifth wheel, where's the bolt to here, and the camper. Yeah, but I need proof that you just, you told them. That was there. The street's here. That's not a signature. Sorry. This is the first time. This is their house. Yeah. This. Because we just had one yeah. or two ago. Um, Where's it going? If this and this are two separate parcel numbers. So this would be here before this, before the building, I mean. And technically it stands on its own. Mm -hmm. That parcel is going to get a structure before a residence. Right. Mm -hmm. That's to me, that's, that's, to that's how I read it. Not. That's the secondary idea. accessory structure. Okay, now I got it. You can tell them what you want to do. I'm going to say I quit. Thank you. Thank you. So now we're going to rush you back over to the podium. And I'm going to ask you both if you would state your name and address for the record, please, into the mic. George James Skaggs. 76680s to the plane in Carlisle, Hudson Township. Carol L. Skaggs, 76680s to the plane in Carlisle, 46552, Hudson okay. Township. 
So the the location where you want to put this garage mm -hmm. is across the street from your home. Correct. Okay. And does it have uh, it has a separate parcel number than your house? Yes, it does. Okay. We have fifteen and it's vacant, vacant lots. It's vacant currently. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a, I saw a photo with an RV or something. That is the parcel next door to next, yours? Yes. So that is not your? That's our property also. That is yours also. Yeah, there's 15 vacant lots across the street. All three of those are yours? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So those are all three separate <clears throat> parcels? Mm-hmm. I think well, the correct could, director, this would not be a secondary structure because right, these would be separate parcels. So you'd be asking to construct yeah. a, a pole barn without a residence. That, that would that's essentially be the request. That's correct, yes. Mm -hmm. Are you going to put uh, electric in the structure? Yeah, probably a later day, yes. Are you going to put water in the structure? Right now it's just going to be for storage. I will put electricity in Do you plan on building a house on that property too by the barn? No. 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 And what kind of storage? Just just what we have, like from the house, just pull pontoon yeah. boat. Yeah. They just have big and garages there. Then. Like a metal building, what kind of mm -hmm. a pool building? Um, roof height, standard, 40. 16 feet. Can they do that? And no uh, residential area in it at all. No, no. It's only for storage. Do you guys have any questions before I? Do I have any remonstrators this evening for petition number one, either for or against petition number one? Any remonstrators? Okay. Any questions or clarifications from the board? Um, since it is a heavily residential area, I mean, are you? What? Are you, how are you going to side the building? I mean, it's not going to look quite right if it's just a pole building. Uh, it's just it's a metal building. You just got to. I can show you a picture, boys. George, could I get you to talk into that microphone a little bit so we can all hear you for the record? It's a metal building. So I got some information on it. If you'd like to look at it. Yes. Okay. And which line is it going at? Do you know this one? It looks to me like this one, but I think that's a good question. Mm -hmm. oh. This is what they turned in with their petition on the middle one. It's going to look like that. It's going to have uh, shuttered windows, just like the picture. Yes. Okay. So that's going to go in the middle lot? It's going to be just in case we get the last five hours. So you're going to build this on the middle lot, though? It, it goes over just like that. So maybe you should have a picture. I would say can have a, yeah. a clarification between yeah. a lot and a parcel. Yeah. You know, there can be many lots that make up one parcel. These are three separate parcel entities. There's five lots on that parcel. you asked for uh, this building on these two parcels. So when I looked it up on Beacon, that only showed two of those lot lines, I believe. Parcel lines. Which is not a problem as long as you tell us exactly, you know, which, which ones you're, you want to build on. Yeah, this, we just need it for the record. Not the lot numbers, the parcel numbers. 
Yeah. Well, two, there's two parcel numbers listed on that. You just said right. this is going on one right. and it will go the, over and on the, the middle other one. one. The middle one that's highlighted here is one of the parcels listed. We just have to determine which one is the other one. They also said it was going on three and a half, five. No, lots. We're getting lots and parcels confused. They right. combine lots to make parcels. We need two parcels. He's got two parcels listed. Uh, the lots are 20 by 100. And you got five lots over there. You're looking, you're looking for the parcel numbers to contain these five lots. And I believe there is two different parcels in there. It's the lot. Three on one, two on the other. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. <laughs> okay. We misunderstood you on that. It was confusing parcel number. Yes. You're filling it out. Yes. That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, this is what they had me draw upstairs. Very good. So this one is so you don't have to keep that. I've got copies. This one is the second one. That's just the petition. No parcels that are created. Thank you. Yeah. So it's the blue one, the blue one that's under attached, and the one to the right. Questions from the board? No, I have no remonstrators, so I will entertain a motion. Madam President, in the absence of any remonstrators, I move that we approve the petition for the variance of developmental standards for Kill L. Skaggs for the construction of a structure 30 feet by 40 feet on the lots across from the residence, from their residence. Is located across the street from 7668 East Tulip Lane, New Carlisle, Indiana, Hudson Lake, zone R1B, and the parcels as listed legally. I have a motion. Can I have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Good luck. Carried. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. What do I do about like, getting a permit? Now you're going to contact the building department and they'll oh. guide you through that process. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It is in there. It's in the packet. <laughs> okay. Moving along, petition number two this evening, and I apologize for packing your name up. The petition for variance of developmental standards for Michael and Casey Lepsinski to construct a second accessory structure 30 feet by 50 feet with a peak height of 30 feet instead of the maximum 18 feet required. The structure will be used for storage, cars, a recreational area, and a changing room with a bathroom. The property is located at 8151 East Walnut Ridge, New Carlisle, Indiana. Wills Township zoned R1A on 1.743 acres. So if you could give your legal work to our attorney, please. Back 
This is adequate. Thank you. If you wouldn't mind giving me your name and address for the record, please. Sure. Uh, my name is Michael Lepsinski, and my address is 8151 East Walnut Ridge, in New Carlisle. Four six five five two. I didn't do so bad on your name, right? You did great. Okay. You did great. So, Michael, let's talk about this. Uh, this accessory structure that you want to put up there. You have a pool. Yeah, so it's, a, it's, it's really a second garage, three-stall garage. Um, the original plans for our house were to be an L-shape and then have the pool kind of in the middle. And after going through the cost analysis, it was going to be too expensive to do it that way. So we changed the house plan to what we have today. Um, and then we we have six people in our family. We have four cars. It's going to be a fifth. So we wanted to add a, another structure to have for parking and those kinds of things. So plus to have, we wanted to add eventually, uh, not right away, but we wanted to put a bathroom in there because it's going to be basically 20 feet from our pool, attached by concrete. Um, so it'd be nice to have an outside. A uh, place for people to go, change, and use the bathroom and whatnot. So, how tall is the peak on your home? Um, it's probably thirty-five feet. Thirty-five. Mm -hmm. Big homes out there. Yeah, we have uh, fourteen, twelve roof pitches on our house. I mean, it was a very complex roof structure, so we made it a lot higher um, than most. So, so by taking this. Uh, garage, we had to increase the roof pitch on it to make it match the house. Um, otherwise, if you make it like this, it's flat. It doesn't go with any of the roof pitches on our house. I think the, the smallest roof pitch we have is a, a 7 12 roof pitch. So, and those are on our flat where our, uh, the steel roof is. I think everybody's just kind of seen the home. So, so the, do you have um, a picture of what this yep. additional structure is going to look like? I want to see how well it's going to blend in with your neighbor. This is a rendering. Uh, it'll be a different color. This is black and white. So it has shed roofs on it, like our house does. So vinyl siding, metal roof. Yeah, so metal roof on it. Um, we haven't decided on the siding yet. Uh, we've, we've gone back and forth on whether we're going to put vinyl on it or if we're going to do vertical um, steel siding. Um, the color we picked would be uh, would be black and white, just like our home. I think our, our home head is all white with black windows and black ceiling with uh, black soffits. So that's so. Can I see that? Mm -hmm. This one? Otherwise, it will literally match your house. It will match your house. And the house, peak exactly. of this roof is five foot lower than the existing roof from It'll be a little bit lower than that, actually. It's 28 and a half feet is the peak of the of it. At a 10, 12 roof pitch right now is the way it's set. Right. We can, you know, we'd be willing maybe to go to an 8, 12, but we'd like to keep it at a 10, 12. But an 8, 12 would take it down to 26 feet. And that would just crush down the recreational area upstairs then. Well, there is no recreational area. It's a it's a, got a scissor That's truss special. in the middle. So we're gonna put a basketball hoop in there for my kids. Oh. So they can play basketball in the, in the winter time. So we're talking electric water, obviously. Yeah, so um, there will be, um, eventually there will be water, not initially. We'll probably have it plumbed for bathroom. Um, the initial construction won't have the electric. We'll sub that out after the initial construction construction's done, so. I just had something else, now I can't think of. No living space. No living no space. Renting. No renting. Are there going to be shenanigans in there? I love to use that word. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. No, we no don't. absolutely not. Yeah, you <laughs> How many times have we talked about this? Four wheelers out on a garage somewhere. It's shenanigans. No, oh, so this is really oh. just for your, <laughs> your family and your personal use. That's, <laughs> That's what I was trying to get at. It's, it's a family oriented thing. <laughs> Do we have any remonstrators this evening? Okay, so 
If you guys have like a general consensus on what your concerns are, if one person wants to represent everybody, if not, I want to hear something new with the next remonstrator. Okay, so we're going to have something new with each one of you. If you would sit down for a moment, we'll hear what they have to say. And I believe we have a written remonstration as well. So you're going to state your name and address for the record, please. My name is James Forney, F-O-R-N-E-Y, 8196 East Walnut Ridge. I've been a uh, home and property owner out there since 2007. What I'd like to do is uh, read a letter um, that describes what my feelings are. The request for public notification of variance Special exception request was not done in accordance with the Port County Board of Zoning Appeals procedures for variance to wit. All adjoining property owners were not notified 10 days prior to the public hearing. The certified mailing was postmarked July the 8th. The adjoining property owners received only a notice of public hearing and did not receive a copy of the actual petition as required by the BZA appeals procedure, page two, paragraph two. The site plan submitted did not include the required placement of septic system, well location, and driveway as required by BZA appeal procedures, page two, paragraph three. The publication for notice a public hearing was done in the West Field Indicator, located near the western boundary of LaPorte County, while Walnut Ridge Estates is located approximately one mile from the eastern boundary of LaPorte County. As per the instructions on hearing, this is not sufficient notice as the West Field Indicator is not in the general circulation on the eastern side of the county. Also, it is a weekly publication. In the uh, procedures, it says the intent is to notify people of a variance of a public hearing. The intent is not to simply fulfill a legal requirement. An example was given in Michigan City, and you can read that. Specific request for variance has many pitfalls. The request is for a 1,500 square foot building with a peak height of 30 feet. As you walk in the entry out here, there's a double row of square windows. That bottom row is approximately 30 feet. The stated purpose of said building is to store cars, provide a recreational area, includes a bathroom. This type of construction seems to identify an industrial or agricultural building. Walnut Ridge Estates has been described and advertised as upscale country living with protective covenants to provide outbuildings for shelter for horses on designated lots. Lot four, the variance exemption request is not one of these designated lots. The description of Walnut Ridge Estates has been continuously used since 2004 and still used today, giving prospective property buyers a security that Walnut Ridge Estates will not morph into an apparent free-for-all, build what you and you only want. The variance procedure states the development of property will be consistent with the intent of the development requirements established by this ordinance for similar uses and will not significantly alter the existed or intended charter of the general vicinity. This is a huge building and Kevin will show you some pictures of what it looks like. Uh, it amazes me. It is very large. A specific pitfall is a request to include a bathroom in the accessory building. In your ordinance, sewer or water to an accessory building is strictly prohibited by Article 16.02, Parent E, under use. Specifically prohibited. Lot 4, 8151 East Walnut Ridge is a corner lot. Thank you. The main right-of-way street is East Walnut Ridge with the corner street of Fox Hollow. The address that you note is East Walnut Ridge. Article 31.25 in definitions Y, the definition of yard says, quote, on a corner lot, the front yard shall be along the street right away that the front of the building faces or the shorter of the two front lot lines which is Fox Hollow, the shorter of the lines. The side street front yard shall also be considered a front lot line. The 
depiction of a corner lot having two front lot line is again indicated on page 31-19 in the definition section. Given that lot four has two front lines, construction of a detached accessory building is prohibited by article 16.02C, location of buildings. The requested accessory building would be located directly across the property at 8152 East Walnut Ridge, exposing them to a 50 by 30 foot building on a daily basis and, in my opinion, certainly affecting the value for possible real resale of that property. The Board of Zoning Appeals Procedure for Variance requires evidence for variance use. Of the five categories required, we feel that only one, the first one, can be met. Each of the additional four categories cannot be substantiated. And I'll read you that. These handouts I have here from 2004 and 2019 Read uh, outbuildings and equestrian use permitted on selected lots, living in harmony with nature. That's nothing to do about large industrial agricultural type building. Are those from your covenants? This is from the advertising from the real estate companies that were trying to sell these. Yeah, you can go ahead and keep those because that is not going to have any bearing on our decision as a board. I understand. I just want to see the res residential motif of this neighborhood has been continuously uh, remained the same. While people have come and people have gone over the last 12 years. There's five on the variance of use, the evidence necessary. The granting of a variance will not be injurious to public health, safety, morals, or general welfare of the community. We grant this building would not do that. Secondly, the use and value of the area adjacent to the property involved will not be affected in a substantially adverse manner. I believe that those two lots across from him will be substantially adversely condition because the resale value these houses go anywhere from 400 500 600 700 thousand dollars my house is around seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars people who move into that neighborhood are not going to put that kind of money into a large outbuilding directly on the other side of their front yard the need for the variance arises from a condition particular to the property and not due to the general conditions of the neighborhood. I know of no particular conditions of the property that requires a second accessory building. Remember, they already have an accessory building as defined by your ordinance as a swimming pool. They're not only asking for variance in height, they're asking for the variance in the number of accessory buildings. Four, the strict application in terms of zoning ordinance would constitute an undue hardship if applied to the property for which the variance is sought. I don't know what undue hardship will be if this building is not constructed. They won't have a bathroom in there because it's prohibited. They won't have a basketball practice area because it's a residential neighborhood not designed for sports buildings. The granting of variance does not interfere substantially with the master comprehensive plan. The master comprehensive plan, as far as our covenants are concerned, state that the only buildings, outbuildings, shelters, will be for horses in lots that are identified for horses. And once again, lot four is not identified for that. I will close. We welcome new neighbors to Walnut Ridge Estates that we have since 2007, and we welcome these two new arrivals. Casey came over to my house, my wife Dee and I, after she heard that we have some concerns about this, and it was very brave of her to do that. A wonderful young lady, and I was glad that she came over. We talked for maybe 45 minutes or so about our concerns. We welcome them to the neighborhood and their children. Many wonderful people have lived here in harmony, keeping the residential motif intact. The residential motif on a premier upscale neighborhood, hard to find in these agricultural type environment. If you look at Wills Township, the agricultural environment zoning is probably 95% of the entire township. We have a very small enclave of residential and even smaller premier upscale properties in this township. 
We rely the uh, premier upscale neighborhood in a beautiful natural setting with stately homes and high property values that deserve to be carefully managed and protected. We rely on these joint zoning ordinance articles to provide that protection. Thank you very much. I do have one question for you. Do you have someone that enforces your covenants? No. Okay. We had, Thank when you. we first started here, the person that enforced the covenants, excuse me, lived there and did a wonderful job doing that. He has since moved, but he is here this evening, and I believe that you could direct your questions to him. Nope. His name That's is all. Mr. Jason. That's all I needed to know is if you have someone who enforces it currently. Thank, Thank you. you. Any questions? Who's next? I'm going to let somebody go before me until my wife gets back. Whomever's next, oh, no. come on up. So we do have one letter of remonstrance. We'll take, uh, I'll take this opportunity to read this letter into the uh, record. Uh, letters in reference to the various requests for my mm. case you left this key on the ridge. Mm. You think? While it is our sincere hope to be good and friendly neighbors to Michael and Casey, we oppose the variance and special exception request that they have presented before the Board of Zoning Appeals on the following agenda. On the following grounds, I'm sorry. Number one, the request would add a secondary accessory structure to the property. Number two, the requested height of the structure is a peak of 30 feet. The maximum allowed is 18 feet. We believe the approval of the variance or special exception will be injurious to the use and enjoyment of other property in the immediate vicinity for the purpose already permitted and will substantially diminish or impair property values within the neighborhood. Thank you for your consideration in this manner. Respectfully, Dean and Michelle Mazzoni. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Earl. If you would state your name and address for the record, please. Sean Surratt, 8265 East Walnut Ridge, New Carlisle. So I won't have quite an articulate uh, argument as, as Jim did, but I'll say I sought, you know, sought the neighborhood because of uh, the, uh, you know, the, the type of neighborhood it is, the type of homes there. And I know I would never consider, you know, erecting an outbuilding that, that would detract from the neighborhood because I do care about the neighborhood just like everyone else here. And uh, there are plenty of other places I think you could put up a, a steel building. Uh, so I, I just don't think it belongs in our neighborhood. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kevin Clinton. We live at 8128 East Walnut Ridge, across the corner, across the street from the uh, proposed building. Um, and I'd like to start by complimenting Jim for the detail he put in and what he put together. So I uh, I went to Google. And this is an aerial from Google. You can pass that around. I do the red rectangle. My house, our house is here with a circle. The letter you just read, Dean and Michelle, is here. This is their house, and that's where, about where, they want to put structure. And I'm concerned not just with the height of the roof, but the placement of the structure and the size of the structure. Because it's billboard size. In fact, with the height that they've requested the variance for, it's two billboards high. 40 feet from the street, across from my house. And it's a long way, right? It's 50 feet long. So everybody driving in and out of our neighborhood, and that's the only way in and out, is gonna see that both ways. Now, Jim talked about Wills Township zoning, and I'm sure you folks are familiar with it, but just in case, I'll remind you. So, here's the zoning map. Probably should circle this. This little isolated pocket of R1A is us. Everything else, pretty much is agriculture. In my opinion, that's where Barnes belongs. 
In terms of property value, looking out my front yard, seeing a two billboard high structure across the street, it's not going to do much for the value of my house. Would you agree that this, the current home um, height is similar to what he's proposing for the garage? Um, it might be similar in height, but it's the barn, the proposed structure is closer to the street. So therefore the appearance will be higher. You know, my house is 125 feet from the street. Theirs is 65 maybe, I'm guessing based on their drawing. Unfortunately, went to the building department because of your computer issues. They uh, couldn't tell me too much. <laughs> hmm. You know, this is. Let me draw a circle here. Make it easier. To do to, to, to get it the right way. So we live in Walnut Ridge. This is the, I put a circle around their property. On the other side of 800, zoned agriculture, is a neighborhood similar to ours, except it is not, because everybody over there is a pole barn, a front yard or side yard. Glenn, could you turn your mic so we can get him on? Mm -hmm. Sure. Right, if you go over there, as you drive down the street, the biggest pole barn in the neighborhood is straight down at the end of the street. You see it all the way in. Very We're not zoned agriculture. And that would be why, or one of the reasons why. So this is the view of their house from my property. Right, so even though they're using an address of 8151 on Walnut Ridge, they've actually turned their house towards Fox Hollow. So the side of their house faces us. So that's the view from my property. And the red box, you'll notice the yellow marks at the bottom, those are actually stakes they have in the ground, of, I presume, where the building is, is going to be situated. So I've extrapolated those up into a box, and that wouldn't include the roof. And I didn't try to be, I'm not an engineer, didn't try to measure to be an engineer. Sir, I'm going to need you to either speak into this microphone or the one at the podium. <laughs> I'm not an engineer. I didn't try to be an engineer. I just tried to depict what I think my view is going to look like. And I based that upon the height of the car, of course, is six foot. And then I blacked it out. So then the back of their house goes away. And that's the view I have from our house. Did, now I can, I'm did sorry. You, did you happen to see a picture of the structure they plan on building? I mean, it looks no, I like, it looks I like it, it, it looks like a residential. No, it doesn't. It looks like a storage building from a camp. Upstairs windows, four car garage. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. The, uh, the neighborhood is full of some very beautiful houses that are all done differently. As Jim pointed out, everybody has different tastes. Everybody does things a little bit different. It's, it's a, a nice country setting neighborhood, but it's not the place for a pole barn. And certainly not as a almost a monument alongside the road, 50 foot long facing the street. You know, whether it looks like a garage or it looks like a country garage or what it looks like, it's not the neighborhood for that. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? You've seen our covenants? Your covenants have no bearing on the decision of this board. Okay. We decide whether or not a variance is granted, and then it goes through the building department decisions. I mean, so we're going to say if there's a, a need for a variance, and that's the end of it. If you have enforcement on your side, then they, it would be your um, covenants. And, you know, job to enforce your your covenants Understood. or your homeowners association or whatever you have in place. All right, thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other remonstrators this evening? Hearing none, I'm going to ask. Um, yeah, over here. Look, the answers on those questions. Mm -hmm. it's a different day. Now. 
name is Jay Seneff. I live at 4603 North 600 East, LaPorte County. I was instrumental in getting this subdivision installed. I originally had 10 acres in a house, and then we purchased 75 acres and designed it specifically for what the people are saying tonight, upscale. Nothing around the area had that to offer. I didn't want, the property was for sale, I didn't want a developer coming in and putting 60 homes back there. Mm -hmm. So we bought it and made big lots, and we made the covenants and restrictions. If you, I'm sure you've seen examples where they're, they look like a catalog, but we went short and sweet and to the point. And it hurts me to be coming to a meeting to where we've got neighbors arguing over what someone wants when it was very clear what was available and what you could do. So hopefully whatever happens after tonight, it doesn't create hardship with the people who live back there. I used to live there, but five years ago, I moved out over circumstances that were unforeseen. But anyhow, and that's when I lived there, I made sure things were done right. But it's sort of a awakening call for the people that do own property and live there. You, know, you ask who enforces their covenants and restrictions. Obviously, we need to do something to make sure that happens every year. But that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you. Any last remonstrator? Okay, hearing none. And I'd like to ask first if our attorney might address some of the issues brought up with notification was inadequate. Um, and of course, we know that getting water in a secondary structure is one of the reasons why you would come in front of the Board of Zoning Appeals. Yeah, well, if you would clear, I'm not going to go through the whole laundry yeah, list, but let's, let's clarify. The point of the zoning code, there are prohibited acts. However, that's the point of this board is to allow a variance from the prohibited acts. So water, for example, we get requests for water all the time. Okay, On the dates on the notice, you are correct. For two days short, I believe, on the notice. Okay. And they, but you, the board, then has the discretion to determine whether or not the notice is adequate at the end of the day. And I do have to add, with due respect, you read the standards for a use variance, not developmental standards. So there is a, but they're almost exactly the same. So, um, other than that, to, to roll through every every argument, I'm right. not going to no. argue the um, case against. Publication was in the Westville Indicator. Is that it's normal and standard and customary to use a Westville Indicator. Uh, since the Herald Irish raised the prices so much, very, very right. hardly anybody uses them anymore. So that's why it's uh, in the Westville Indicator. And it is an adequate, publica uh, an adequate uh, uh, newspaper to publish in. Means of publication. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what kind of questions do we have as a board? Hmm. I mean, I'm going to say one thing, I, and I may be really unpopular out there, and I apologize, but if I had a pool, I, you know, I, we get a lot of requests for a secondary structure because they want to have water in there for their pump houses or a bathroom, things like that. If I had a pool in an upscale neighborhood like you claim it is, then I think I would benefit from having a facility where people can change their clothes and use the restroom right. instead of peeing in my pool. Hmm. Um, from that perspective, I mean, I certainly do understand the height is an issue uh, and its proximity to the road. So I'm not... Um, willing to take that into consideration but as far as having another structure with water and a restroom I, I'm not uh, not, I, opposed I'm to not opposed to that Can I say something? no mm -hmm. when we're done mm -hmm. yeah what other questions I am believe yield to the, the builder I mean what are your thoughts you know if we put you on the spot with it I actually don't um, Really, what, what this is really coming down to is the lack of proper covenants and restrictions in the neighborhood to ensure this would or would not happen. So that is beyond our control. Um, we're just here to make the determination about the variance. And that's all we're here for. Um, it's unfortunate that you guys don't have that proper checks and balance in place or you don't have some kind of governing board that can provide that checks and balance. 
but that's really not our issue here. So. Very well put, Greg. I agree. Very great. Thanks. I, along with Melissa, agree that, I mean, the pictures that they gave us, the pictures of the building, I mean, it's tastefully done. He explained that originally he would have built the building with creating some sort of courtyard right. to shelter the pool mm. from the public. And I think that's what he's trying to accomplish here. He, he's showing and it, you're, the the public has exaggerated that this building is so far on the side of the lot line. It 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 is deep into the depth of the house, according to the schematic that they've shown here. The the the. We're not the, taking public comment at this time. We're not taking questions at this time. That was during remonstrance. You had a chance when it was remonstrating for the petition. I think you're right. What you're saying. Well, you'll have to wait and see if we answer that question then. So, I mean, in my opinion, he's, he's, it's not an agricultural building. He's mm -hmm. trying to, you know, That's not build it. himself a courtyard, like he said. He's trying to shelter. I mean, I don't want my kids and family, you know, exposed to that. Mm -hmm. You have to put a fence here. You have to do something from the road right. for that pool. So this building facilitates that problem. So if we can get you to come back up to the podium, Michael. Let's see what other questions we have as a board. And just, I want to clarify, the address was issued by the building department, or was it, do you know if it was already addressed from the subdivision? I believe it was addressed from the subdivision. Mm -hmm. Okay, from so. From the plats. From the plat. Oh, yes. And uh, oftentimes that happens, mm -hmm. that they are recorded with an address already done. So determination of front lot line, I don't think is a issue. an issue, because that address would have been determined at the time of recording. Um, and the building department didn't have a problem with the pool. The pool is put in the rear of the home. Right. So they identified the front of the home right. differently than Correct. the right. and the setbacks were all or that would have come in care. front of us as yes. well. Right. All the setbacks are correct. <laughs> so okay. Any further questions from the board? Go ahead, Yeah. In what year did you put the pool in? Uh, we put the pool in, um, I believe it was in May this year. This the original year. plan was to actually put the garage in first, um, but where the garage we have you set. this one in first? That's right. Um, where it sets, we put in a fiberglass pool, so it's delivered on a, a truck. Mm -hmm. So it's easier to have the truck deliver oh. the pool in and put the pool right, in, put in, in the concrete around the pool, then put the garage in and the concrete oh, afterwards. Yeah, so that was why we did it the way we did it. If we did it the other way, we wouldn't be here. Right. Either. We'd be here. And what year was the home built? Uh, just We just got our occupancy permit a month ago. Okay. Yeah, I Thank you, Madam President. Uh, yes, I am very quiet because uh, this is the Board of Zoning Appeals, and they're here to appeal. And uh, I'm generally very, very um, lenient on the appeals because there are no remonstrators. In this case, we have a ton of remonstrators, including the original developer, in a sense. And we're talking about homes of, of this value to have four or five other neighbors uh, remonstrating that concerns me that's why we're here that's why we're established and as, as you compare this to our first case they were building a building across the street with no residents at all but the neighbors didn't care so in my opinion if they don't care why do I care in this case we have just the opposite situation we have neighbors they care, it's on a corner lot. I live across the corner lot. I understand that the, the change that makes sometimes. Um, and that's why I've been pretty quiet. And 
I, I just want to remind everybody on the board that our decision is based on evidence that is presented and not the number of remonstrators that are present either way. So I think we should vote. Yeah, I do too. Well, I'd like to keep the record clear. Thank you, Doug. I'll make a motion. Very good. I'd like to make a motion that the petition for variance of developmental standards for Michael and Casey Absinski. Absinski. Uh, to construct a second accessory structure of uh, 30 feet by 50 feet with a peak height of 30 feet instead of the maximum allowed 18 feet uh, be granted. The structure will be used for storage of cars, recreational use, will include water with a bathroom not to be used for living. The property is located at 8151 East Walnut Ridge, New Carlisle, Indiana, Wills Township. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second the motion. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of granting the variance say aye. Uh, aye. Those opposed? Aye. Okay, the motion passed. 4 1. Thank you. 4 1. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Petition number three. Who do we appeal to? There is a section in the formula that yeah. appeals, but I don't know who to go. He appeals to circuit course, so higher lawyer. Can I ask one more question? All those things that he's supposed to provide evidence for that's going to be a hardship that he doesn't have that's in the uh, affidavits or in the petition, was any of that evidence provided? Part of the term. Sir, you're out of order. Uh, yeah, as a procedural question, that's fine, but now you're trying to argue your side of the case again. I saw the public record that we see the evidence. You've heard the evidence. Yeah. Okay. And you can watch the equal recording again, too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Number three. Okay, petition number three this evening for a variance of developmental standards for Sue Ann Tomian to construct an addition on the side of the home containing the basement and main floor, four feet by 18 feet, eight inches, with the side setback of two feet and five and a half inches instead of the 10 feet minimum. Final structure, excuse me, final structure will be over the 45% lot coverage for the property located at 3221 Lakeshore Drive, Michigan City, Indiana. Indiana, Michigan Township, zoned R1B on 0.14 acres. Sue Ann, are you here? Are you going to represent Sue Ann? I am. If you'd love to present your legal work to the attorney, that would be great. I you don't have any. <laughs> So I think what we might you don't have to want to do is postpone her till next month. Will she be back? They'll be home Friday. Oh, that's unfortunate. Next month. So we're going to have. That we can't. Yeah, that's yeah. I have none of that. Oh, I just found out today this is going. I'm motion motion to postpone until next month. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 So we're going to postpone them until the August twentieth meeting. So they need to be here on August twentieth. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sorry you had to wait so long for that. <laughs> Okay, petition number four is a petition for variance of developmental standards for LaPorte State Road 104 BTS Retail LLC and Emory Investments LLC for a reduction in a buffer zone from 20 feet to 10 feet along the adjacent residential district, the elimination of the three foot tall berm requirement along the adjacent residential district, a reduction in green belt along side frontage from 20 feet to five feet for the property located currently at zoned M1 light industrial and is proposed to be rezoned to B1 neighborhood commercial district. For the property located at 3522 South State Road 104 Laporte, Indiana Pleasant Township zoned M1. If you would present your legal work to our attorney, please. I don't know. That's my very first question. Why are we here? What do you find the answer? Okay. 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 This should be resolved before it comes to us, shouldn't it? Yeah, but it's, it's going to be the same. There's only one change. Oh. So it's going to be the same. 
Hey, one, two months. It's on the next agenda. For next week. That's what I thought. Yeah. They're here to next on that. Next Tuesday. I don't know where this goes. Oh, that's what I don't understand. I think it goes here. In the corner? I think so. Hmm. This thing goes here. I don't know. Do you know what it is? No. What's that? What? No. Like in Kingsbury. Like everywhere. Like that bio. Like in the prairies. The bio of the Bio of the prairies. Like solar? Solar panel farms. Oh. That's the purpose of the reduction? I don't know. Mm, I don't know. Please look. It's here. Don't we don't do this. Mm -hmm. We don't get that a variance, do we? No, I thought this was something. So we don't know. It's me and my for your hand belt. It's not a toy. Zay? That's important. I really can't do that. That's a, two, that's a big reduction in the green belt. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm going to look at this stuff tomorrow. Well, here we are. There we go. Glad you're going to give us a lot more. Yeah. Thank you. Just everything. Yeah, just one Okay, thank you. I'm going to have you, if you want to pass out some uh, handouts while you state your name and record for the address, or yeah, name and address for the record, please. Sure, I'm Tom Callan with Zorma Group out of Cleveland, uh, address 14600 Detroit Avenue, Lakewood, Ohio. And I'm Whitney Pazala. I'm with AR Engineering. We're the civil engineer company on the project. And our address is 4664 Campus Drive, and that's in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Could you put that mic close? Yeah, we can. Well, we're trying to record this. We're going to have a hard time. <laughs> okay, well, I. You know, I'm a little confused reading your petition, so why don't you explain it to us and uh, what it is exactly that you're trying to accomplish here. Okay. Um, so the, the drawings in front of you, um, it's for a, a Dollar General project. It's along State Road 104, mm -hmm. just south of Hup Road, um, just south of the railroad tracks. Um, Expansion and growth. We are... It is about a 1.27 acre parcel um, with parking along the building frontage um, and along the right of way, and then we have some parking along um, the north or the north elevation, if you call it the northwest elevation, the number three. Um, and so we're asking for um, essentially three variances. Um, one is the, and they're all from Article 17 of the zoning ordinance. One is for the front yard um, buffer zone, which is states if any parking within the um, front yard, we need to have 20 feet from the right of way. Um, a portion of the um, parking at the most or the, sh the shortest distance is about um, five feet, and then we taper the parking back down, as you'll notice, to, and then eventually we'll get over a little over 20 feet. Um, the reason for that is, is that it's mainly for truck deliveries. Um, we need the area for the truck turning movements to stay um, within. I don't know if you have. Do you have copies of this one? No. Um, 
we don't have well, any. Well, unless it's the uh, only bigger. I think it's this one only bigger. This is a bigger version of that, correct? Yeah, that one's the. Yeah, that one has the the darker shaded. Um, this one does. area. Oh, sorry. Is basically the area that the truck needs to make the turning movement um, on the black and white one, not the aerial drawing. Um, Just out of curiosity, yeah. have, are you waiting to go to NDOT, whether or not we... So we did talk to NDOT on a preliminary side of things, and they were, um, the curb cut location and the general layout, they were okay with. Are you surprised they were okay? They were okay with, yes. Correct. And again, out of curiosity, sorry, Doug, did they recommend an acceleration deceleration lane? Not with the traffic flows through 104? There. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll slide through the tracks anyway. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then the other one is for the north, along the north property line, the northwest, um, that property next to us is residential. Um, there's a buffer zone requirement to be. Um, 20 feet for that as well, and then um, there's also a berm requirement, a three foot tall berm, and it's essentially for the same reasoning as for truck and be safe vehicle movements um, in order to get deliveries in here. Um, we have to have sufficient drive aisle widths for that. Um, it is at the most is 10, or the shortest is 10 feet, and we do eventually it'll taper back up to 20, and then we'll buy the dumpster. It's about 25 feet. So we meet it in parts of it, in parts of it we don't. So then let's talk about your reduction in the green belt area along the street frontage from 20 feet to 5 feet. Okay. Um, you mean further from what I, so the first part. So I, we talked about the reduction of the buffer zone along the parking and the right of way. Yep. And then you talked about the northwest area with that residential parcel, the berm area reducing that one. And then I have uh, a reduction in green belt along street frontage from 20 feet to five feet. Right, that's the first one um, I talked about was the, the parking along the frontage um, with the right Would of Would you turn that microphone a little bit? Just there you right. go. Yeah. So the green belt uh, reduction and the buffer zone from 20 feet to 10 feet along right. the parking area. Is that what you're saying? Um, those are both the same? The No, sorry. Um, the reduction for the buffer zone from 20 feet to 10 feet is along the adjacent northwest. The residential area. Yep. Um, the reduction in green belt along the street frontage is 20 um, to 5 feet, and that is along the, the frontage along the street. And explain to me again why the five feet, because that is a lot of reduction for green belt space. So I know we talked about semis making the turn. Um, it, 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 it does appear to be um, quite a bit. It is from the right-of-way line. The right-of-way line, which I know we don't own, we don't own the right-of-way, but it is 24 feet wide from the edge of pavement. Um, right. So it's not going to appear For utilities look, and... Sure. It's not going to appear to look that... Uh, small of a distance, the five feet, and it is for only a portion of the. Right, I see it. So it, it is for the portion of the this section. So this area, and then it tapers. And mm -hmm. the reason why we taper it is because the truck doesn't need all this. We don't need to, so we're trying to create more green space. Okay, thank you. Do we have any remonstrators this evening for petition number four, either for or against? If you could hold on just a moment. If you guys would sit down, we'll, we'll hear what from our first remonstrator. If you would come to the mic and state your name and address for the record, please. My name is
is Thomas Tomasino, 106 West Hup Road in LaPorte, or Stillwell. Um, I'm all new to this, but uh, this notice that they sent to some residents is very legal talk and doesn't really tell us exactly what's going on with this. Um, we've never seen this before. Um, I've just heard bits and pieces that it has something to do with Dollar General. Is that right? It is. Is it a store or is it a um, distribution center? It's a store. It is an actual store. Would you like to look at the drone? You yes, can grab please. that one. Take it. Maybe leave it at the podium. Excuse me one second while no I take a look here. <laughs> so as, as you can see, there's an unused portion of that property there that they're trying to utilize. So this is... This is where the house used to be that burned down recently. <laughs> oh. Yeah, hold your comments. Yeah. Okay, so the, okay, I. So this is where the last roundup is over here, and then there's that house. This is the alley way, and over here is where that house used to be. See, I thought that they, when I got this description, I thought they were talking about the property where the current factory is. It's actually kind of just northwest of that a little bit. Right, right. So this is going to be like right in our backyard. <laughs> Actually, it's going to be in Jim Rimball's backyard. I was hoping... I don't feel like that too. I was hoping he was going to be here, but... He'd either be convenient or not. Right, it'll, that gallon of milk might look really good when you can just walk over. Yeah, well, at least it's not a distribution center. <laughs> oh, is that in Westville? <laughs> How is this going to affect the property value the values of our homes around here? That's one of your questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, and is this supposed to be a retention pond back here? I believe it is a detention pond. Retention. retention. I can't hold on. Let me see what it's labeled. We'll Reten ask, retention. We'll later. Yeah, it's a detention is what it says here. In accordance with uh, stormwater detention required per LaPorte County stormwater guidelines. So hopefully that'll be dry most of the time. It's going to cause a lot of extra noise and traffic, I think. You think it'll be more noise than the train? <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I doubt I'm that. asking the question. I'm remember, it's zone manufacturing right now. They're asking for a lighter zoning the manufacturing. They're asking for yeah. B1. They're asking for a lighter zoning actually, than what it's currently zoned as. It's zoned for manufacturing. It could be a you could have yeah, right now it's zoned, and somebody could put a factory there. What they're asking for is that it be in business zoning, okay? Which is less. It's it's a lighter zoning category. Didn't that used to be a residential area? No, I think it was always owned by priest by weast pre-staining. It was always part of their property. And so, I'd like, ma'am, I'm going to have to ask you to wait to give your comments till you come up to Ravon Street, if you would please. And, sir, if you could limit yours to questions. Okay, sorry, I'm new to this, regarding. and this is the first time I've seen all of this. It would have been nice to have received something besides all 
all this. I feel the same way as a board member sometimes, jumbo. so I got it. And uh, um, part of this area several years ago, I don't know if that's included in this particular property, that it was, um, we had received notices about chemical spills and mm-hmm. improperly stored chemicals, and I just wonder if this is part of that super fund site and if this property is mm-hmm. contaminated still or whatever happened with that. That just kind of disappeared. I do not think it is in there, but they would certainly have restrictions on building there if that were the case. Right. Um, okay, I don't... I can't think of anything else right now. Thank you. I'd like to ask question. Please. You're asking us, you know, you're, you're part of this community, and you're asking us, would this do, you know, change your property values? I mean, we want to know from you is whether you you think in your community this would be a positive thing is to have a retail store store i think it'll change the way the community is right now it's a quiet residential area um and when we need things it's just a short drive into town like we've always done um i just feel that it's going to change the neighborhood it's not going to be a quiet residential area anymore especially if um this brings other things in. I mean, it's bad enough with the factory there when they were in their prime with the smells and the noise and things. But. Thank you. You want to, you have some comments? Do we have any additional remonstrators here, either for the petition or against the petition? Any additional remonstrators? If you would state your name and address for the um, record, please. Christy Schrader, 6 South Floral Avenue. Thank you. Chris Dewell, Marlowe Port. So is this meeting determining whether this property is being built or just explaining that this is happening? So they're coming to the board for permission to change some of our requirements. The setback off of the right of way from State Road 104 and along that northwest side. So to build. we're not going to determine if the, if the board granted it, they would probably be more able to move forward. Okay. Otherwise, Thank their you. size restriction is going to stop them from using that site okay. without a redesign. Good job, Glenn. Now, as like as far as truck traffic goes, I do understand it's uh, trucks do come and go. I mean, are they permitted to go down that alley to the side there? Mm. It, the issues are the only thing that's in front of this board tonight is to determine how close they can get to the sides of the property. Okay, okay? that's all they're asking. All right, we've got to restrict our questions and comments to that area. Okay, so the property that it points to at the very end here? The the property at the top? Yeah. So essentially that's the property in question because the rest is already part of the Weiss or the Weiss staining. Right. Nope, I have no further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, do I have any comments or questions of the board? And if not, I, I would really like to entertain a motion on this one. Okay. I'm going to say one thing. I live in Wanata, okay. out in the country. We put a Dollar General in. It's been a life changer. Winkies are easy to get now, aren't they? It is so true. Madam All President. Those things that we would have to drive for. I'll go ahead and I'll make this motion here for petition number four, the petition for a variance of developmental standards for the port SR 104 BTS Retail LLC Emory Investments uh, for the reduction of the buffer zone that was discussed 20 feet to 10 feet with the, the, this, the adjacent residential district elimination to 3 feet the tall burn requirements along the adjacent uh, residential district a reduction in the green belt along the street frontage from the 20 feet to the 5 feet and uh, properties currently zoned M1 light industrial it's located at 3522 South State Road 104 Laporte down in Pleasant. A motion and a sec. Do I have a second? 
a question. I think you skipped the sentence where it's zone light. M1 M1 light and it's being proposed to re be rezoned to B1. Thank you, Earl. I think I did. Okay, noted. noted. With that amendment, do I have a second? I'll second it. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion passed. Good luck. Do we have any business in front of us this evening? Anne-Marie, do you have any new business for us? No, Melissa. I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. There you go. Thank, Thank you. Good evening. Stop the room.